Hello, everybody. I hope you're well, and I'd like to welcome you to another UMCOM podcast. My name is Kim Cyberling, and I am happy to be talking to you today about outreach events. If you look at the prior podcasts that I have done, you'll see that outreach events is a core component in getting people to come to your church for the first time. Now, I want to preface outreach events by saying they aren't uh, magic bullets. There's no substitute for true hospitality, true relationships with Jesus Christ, and true community. But outreach events are a way to help the community around you know that those things are available to them at your church. So the first question I'm going to answer is what exactly is an outreach event? The purpose of an outreach event is to make the church known in the community, not to get people immediately in the pews. It takes time to build relationships. Eventually, they will come to the church, but you have to be patient. So an outreach event is done with the intentionality that eventually the people that you're inviting will eventually be invited into the pews of the church. Second of all, an outreach event is totally free. So we don't collect any money from people. We try and keep this um, as much as possible, a no strings attached event. We're doing it simply so people in the community gain awareness of our presence and begin to entertain a relationship with our church. Remember an outreach event is not a mission project. A mission project's objective is to help others. It's to empower your laity to be the hands and feet of Christ, but it's not really to evangelize necessarily. So if you're, for example, serving at a soup kitchen, that is not an outreach event. That is a mission project uh, because the objective is to help others and to be in mission. I want to reiterate the fact that these outreach events that we're going to be talking about are like relationships that we're trying to form. I know if you're married, you probably didn't ask your spouse to marry you on the first date, right? And that's what we do with a lot of outreach events. We think we're going to date the community and after the first date, we're going to ask them to come to church and join our church. Well, that's a little radical. We live in a day and an age where people are skeptical of institutions. People are skeptical of um, things that have long been held as sacred in our culture. We no longer hold that place. And so I would really encourage you to think of outreach events as like first dates that we're having with the community and not to jump right in and ask people at these events necessarily to get married on the first date. Maybe we can invite them back to another event or we can invite them back uh, to vacation Bible school or something of that nature. But that first outreach event is going to be very much like a first date. We're trying very hard to make a good first impression. We're trying very hard to get that person to want to come back for whatever reason. So when we talk about outreach events, I want to emphasize that not every outreach event is appropriate for every church in every community. When I was a little girl, I used to fish a lot. I loved fishing. And I learned that depending on what you were trying to catch, you would use different kinds of bait. I learned that you can use corn, that you can use worms. If you're fishing for larger fish, you need to use a lure or even another small fish. My husband and I went to a vacation in Peru several months ago and we hunt and we fished for piranhas. And we use little pieces of meat to catch piranhas. And so it's important for us to know what fish we're fishing for and what bait to use. So before you can choose your bait, you need to know your fish. In the like, before you choose an outreach event, you need to know who you're trying to attract. 
So for example, a lot of churches tell me we're trying to reach families with young children. And I think that's wonderful. I think every church should have some families with young children. Well, if you're trying to reach family with families with young children, you're not going to have an outreach event featuring health screenings for senior citizens with blood pressure checks and uh, optometrists there to check for glaucoma. You're going to do something that appeals to young families. You have to do something that attracts the families or the demographic that you're trying to attract. I want to give us all a somber reminder that churches are in a very competitive market. And I don't mean just competitive as in there's a lot of different denominations out there. There's a lot of different forms of worship available nowadays. Um, that is true. But what I'm talking about is we are actually competing for the free time of young families. That's kind of the currency we're competing in. And when you talk about what families can do with their free time, they have a myriad of options. And so churches really need to think of outreach events as in that competitive space of competing for families free time. And if you think about your free time, that is a very, very precious commodity. You're not just gonna spend that willy nilly. For many of us, our time is even more important than our financial resources. So think very carefully in the sense that this is really important to get right because we are asking families when they come to an outreach event to give up some of their leisure time. So my first piece of advice when your church decides that they want to do an outreach event is to be very strategic in the outreach event which they choose. So when you choose, for example, that you're going to do an Easter egg hunt, are you offering an event that people want to come to? If people don't want to come to it, you're going to spend a lot of your church's money and energy for um, an event that people will not come out to. So you're probably asking, how do I know if these people want to come out to this event? And we're going to talk about that a little later. So... You have to ask who I'm inviting and why. In other words, who are my fish and what is the bait? And then does it meet the, a felt need? The important word here is felt. I can believe with my deepest, deepest conviction that young families need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is the need that I'm trying to meet. However, if young families don't feel like they need a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's not going to attract them. Even though it may be true, they have to feel like that is a need. And then the final thing is do your homework. You have to ask the people around you and the people already in that demographic if it's something that they would come to. I always like to just ask around to young families, ask what they're doing, ask what toys their kids are playing with, ask what their kids are involved with, what they're interested in. Do a Google search and say, what, do, what toys are young kids playing with? Or what movies are young kids going to see? Um, and that sometimes can lead us in the right direction or give us some ideas about what might attract that demographic. You need to ask yourself, is it something to be proud of? Is it fun? Is it attractive? I'm just gonna be really upfront with the listeners today and say that I have worked with many, many churches. I have been to many, many church outreach events. And sometimes I go to outreach events and they're not very good. If I were the pastor of that church, I would not be proud of that event because it's poorly done, it's poorly conceived, the attendance is poor, and when you have an event like that, it just makes everybody a little grouchy. And so I feel like when churches go to plan these outreach events, you have to ask yourself, is this something that I would want the whole world to know that I'm doing? All right. Is this something that I um, would want on the media? 
is this something that I will want my pastor friends to know about? And even then, be very, very careful. Is this something that is competitive, again, in the secular market, the non-church market? Is your event fun and attractive? Everything you do around this event should be fun and attractive. No one's going to give up their time to do something that's not fun on their day off. And so make sure that whatever you're offering has an element of fun to it. Am I making it easy? When I say am I making it easy, I'm talking about is this event easy to come to? Is it in an accessible location? Are people able to get to it easily? Is it something that I make easy, make it for my members easy to invite to? In other words, how are my friends, how are my church members going to invite others to this event? You need to have a clear strategy and you need to have a clear um, method for inviting people to this event. If it's going to be my members are going to invite, you need to give them a tool, some kind of flyer, some kind of Facebook page, something to share on social media, something to share in an email. Okay. Finally, you need to advertise. Now, I know when I say you need to advertise, a lot of you are saying like dollar signs slip out from between your fingers and advertising doesn't necessarily in this day and age have to be as expensive as it's been mm. in the past. When I talk about advertising, I'm going to make it clear again, it should be, yes, attractive. That's right. We in the church are infamous for being cheap running things off black and white. And the reality of it is at one point in time, that was fine. But in this day and age, the world is a color age. So your advertisements need to be in full color. Color is not that expensive. If you've never done a flyer in color or printed in color, please check it out. It is now competitively priced and it isn't expensive to do full color posters. You're going to hang those out in the community uh, and utilize your social media. What, however you decide you're going to advertise for this event, make sure that your advertisement is attractive, that it is neat. Make sure that it is clear. In other words, you don't want to put too many words on that poster um, because people are going to be walking by that poster and they're not going to stop and read the whole thing. So please be sure that you keep your text on that poster relatively brief. You don't need to put every little detail on there. Just get the essence of the event on the poster and any essential information that that person would need. And because we are keeping it fun, attractive, and easy, there shouldn't be that much for that poster. We all have to stop sometimes and really ask ourselves, what am I doing? Is this the right thing to do? These outreach events can be very expensive. These outreach events can use a lot of your lay people's energy. So really, I really, really encourage pastors and lay people before they get their heart set on an outreach event, before they begin advertising, before they begin planning to ask people, is this something you would take your family to? Is this something that you think would be worth getting out of bed on a Saturday afternoon for? Um, we know we've all been there, how precious just those lazy weekend days are. And so we really, really have to be checking with our target demographic to make sure that they're what we're offering is something that people want to come to. When you have an outreach event, and I touched on this briefly before, we are not asking people to marry us on the first date. We're inviting them into a relationship with our church. And we've all been in relationships before, and we know that relationships can be risk-taking. Um, relationships can be... Um, scary. And so, yeah, 
um, make sure there's something to invite them back to. You, I'm telling you, do not make that thing you invite them back to church unless it's Christmas and Easter. Christmas and Easter are times when people are naturally open to religious things. They're open to the church. And so outreach events that precede, immediately precede Christmas and Easter, you're allowed to invite them back to church because those people in in some capacity, uh, it's culturally acceptable to invite people to church on Christmas and Easter where it is not always acceptable to invite people to church for the rest of the year. So we Christians kind of get a free pass on Christmas and Easter. And I really encourage your church to look at those events that you're having before Christmas, to look at those events that you're having before Easter and really kick those into full, full gear um, and get people um, to invite back. Now you're gonna be asking, how do I invite people back? Do I give them a flyer? What do I do? My recommendation is this, and some churches are comfortable with this and some are not. Uh, just know that this is how the churches that I have worked with have been successful. I always have some sort of free giveaway. And on that free giveaway, you put the, the, the person's name, their cell phone number, and their email address. When you get those cell phone numbers, it is possible to get a mass text messaging service for free or very little money. It's super cheap. Then you send out a text message or an email that says something like this. We are so grateful that you attended our Easter egg hunt. We hope you had a good time. We really enjoyed meeting you. We'd love if you would join us for our Easter services that are at eight and nine o'clock this Sunday. Um, and then that's the end of the email, but you're inviting them back. So you can see how this works. You can do the same thing if it's a child center event before Vacation Bible School. That's also another great time to have an event to invite people back to. I recommend, especially for small sized churches, look at the things that you're already doing, the things that are already an integral part of your life and where new people are already coming in and then have that big outreach event before that. That way you're not reinventing the wheel. You're not making a new event where you have to find more volunteers and more resources. So look at what your church is already doing and seeing where you can strategically place those outreach events around what you're already doing. I wanna remind us of all why we have outreach events. It's not because we necessarily need to have a lot of new people in our pews. It's not because we want to be successful churches or successful pastors. It's because we believe that a relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important relationship a person can have. And we believe that there are people in our communities who don't know Jesus and who need that relationship or they need a church to help strengthen that relationship. And so I would just remind you, as you look at all the work that these outreach events are, all the follow-up that's required from these outreach events, not to be discouraged because really there is no better mission than to bring people to Jesus. I know personally, I don't know where my life would be without Jesus. And I really want to see everyone in my community have a rich and full life with Jesus. And so that really motivates me when it comes to these outreach events. So thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you got some great ideas and I hope you'll join us for my next podcast, which is about guest readiness in your churches. Because once then you get them to start coming to your church, you want them to stay at your church. So please tune in for that next podcast. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you then. Bye.